Welcome to Couch Talk. Today we meet a woman who is making a difference in the Canadian film industry, both behind and in the front of the camera. Hi, my name is Fabienne Collab, president and founder of both the Montreal and the Toronto Black Film Festival, actress and director, and I'm passionate, really passionate about inspiring people to go and live their best life and be unstoppable, to just go and live out loud. Fabienne, I'm so happy to have you on the couch today. Um, you're you. in the film industry. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, well, it is at times, <laughs> depending on what perspective. But uh, independent film um, films right now are struggling a little bit okay. with financing and everything. But besides that, mm -hmm. um, there's a real interest for independent films in festivals mm -hmm. and they're winning awards. They're going to the Oscars right now. Right. So, yeah, the future is... It's bright. Yeah. <laughs> so before you started um, the Montreal and the Toronto Black Film Festival, mm -hmm. what were you doing before then? Wow, before then, I think I was in Haiti, my, um, where I was born and grew up. And um, I was a model. Well, that was 20 pounds <laughs> ago. <laughs> and um, yes, I was a model. I was Miss Haiti and I was an actress over there. Okay. You were Miss and Haiti, how cool. Yeah, that was another life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was acting in Haiti and became very, very popular. But at a certain period of time, I thought um, I was not growing anymore. Mm -hmm. I think I needed to go and conquer the world. Okay. And then which brought me here. Oh, okay. And... Um, why Montreal specifically? My dear friend, I was on my way to Hollywood. When I stopped Did you get here, lost? I'm telling you, I stopped here and then people were so friendly and so nice. They said, you can study here, you can come and everything. I said, okay, no problem. So I'm going to stay here for one year and then I'm going to go to California. Seriously. And for me, Montreal was a bridge. You know, you don't okay. stay long on a bridge. You're just crossing. It's, it's for you to go from A to, to B. All right. And I fell in love with Montreal. I mm. fell in love with Quebec. I fell in love with Canada. And here I am 10 years later. Ten so, and that was the biggest the decision. <laughs> oh, that was the biggest, best decision ever. One of the best decisions I've took. But they didn't tell me about the winter. They didn't okay. tell me that. No, of course not. They didn't want to scare you. <laughs> I wouldn't tell yeah, you either. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. You know, I've heard that from different women who have been on this couch where I would ask them why Montreal and they always say that they fell in love with the city. I think there's something... There's um, something charming about There's Montreal. something charming. There's something cool. Right. There's something you don't find elsewhere. Right. I think Montreal is unique because for me, it's a combination of the Caribbean, where I'm from, a combination of per, per, um, Paris, mm -hmm. it, and also a combination of New York somehow. Yes, like, so you blend that all together and it's Montreal and so much more. So That's a yeah. great description, yes. Now, what inspired you to start the... Um, black Film Festival in Montreal? Well, I came with um, a copy of the last film I played in as a lead role in Haiti. Okay. It was a very, I mean, for us in Haiti at the time, it was the Titanic, the Haitian Titanic. <laughs> it was a huge, big film. Okay. But today when I watch it, it's a very small, low budget, very <laughs> little film that I wouldn't even show you today. Okay. But um, at that time, it was a big film. And it, that film had a very social impact because it was a social discussion going on in the film. Okay. It was very important for the Haitian diaspora all over the world. Okay. And I came with that copy. I submitted it to a festival in particular that was supposed to be aligned with this kind of conversation, this right. kind of reality. And no festival would show the film. None. None. And that's, why, that's when I, I became a very disappointed, very angry, very um, hopeless. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I thought, well, maybe Montreal need 
an additional festival, a different festival, another festival, because if I cannot find a platform to screen that film, how many other people might be in the same situation and cannot screen their films. So right. this is how everything started. Okay. okay. So the year after, right. we created the Haitian Film Festival, which later on became the Montreal Black Film Festival. Right. And that was a smooth transition from Haitian Film Festival to just Black Film Festival because well, there was a demand for it. Exactly. Right. The thing is, we, we started really as a Haitian Film Festival, showcasing Haitian films from all over the world because it was filmed done on Haitian realities okay. by any kind of directors, Danish, British, French, Haitian, whoever, okay. about the Haitian reality. And then so many people, because the, the, the festival um, started with uh, three films in three days, and 3,000 people, people came, wow. like, for, sh right showed off up. The bat, the first I'm telling time. you, the first time, the first <laughs> year, it was a December time, and then still storm, and then 3,000 people over three wow. days for three films. So, and so many people that were not even Haitian, that had film on African um, realities, or mm -hmm. Caribbean, or, or Afro African American films, wanted to uh, submit mm -hmm. to the festival. And we kept saying, no, we're Haitian, <laughs> only on film festival. And due to the demand, due to the growing submission mm -hmm. of other films, so we had no choice then opening it up to the Montreal International right. Black Film Festival. And today, we are happy to say mm -hmm. we have over 100 films every wow. year coming from 40 countries, mm -hmm. and we welcome celebrities <laughs> from all over the world. Right, and you guys have had some pretty big names. Yeah, like Harry Belafonte, right. Suleiman Sisse, um, Danny Glover, and last year Spike Lee. Right. So we're pretty, I think it's a big thing for Montreal to be able to have a platform to welcome those people. It's good for Montreal because each time they come, mm -hmm. um, Montrealers benefit from that. Right. Um, Canadian artists meet, come to meet those celebrities and mm -hmm. then um, learn from them. And it's also good press right. for it's Montreal. It's inclusive, it's yeah, diversity, absolutely. it's cultural. Mm -hmm. It can only do good for the city. But definitely. I did not envision <laughs> that this will of just creating a new platform to have a voice could turn into a movement, right. could turn into a big thing. And today we also have the Toronto Black Film Festival. You see, so... Um, it's been three years, right, for the Toronto yeah, uh, Festival? Yeah, and ten years for Montreal. Montreal. But what I keep from that is sometimes a no can be the biggest and the best thing ever happening to right. you. Because if the first festival and the other festival did not turn me down, if they did not say no, mm -hmm. today maybe those festivals wouldn't have exist. Maybe they wouldn't have had any Fabian Collas Foundation. Right. So sometimes a no can be the beginning of an, It's a new beginning for you, actually. Right, mm -hmm. definitely. Because out of feeling hopeless, you created a new reality for yourself and now for many others. I hope so. <laughs> and this is what Oprah described as, as failure is the universe trying to shift you mm -hmm. in another direction. I really, truly believe that's what happened to me. I do mm -hmm. too. Yes. Uh, out of failure, new ideas and having yeah. to reinvent yourself. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and we happens. hope, we hope it's just the beginning, mm -hmm. not because it's 10 years that we, <laughs> we made it or something. No, 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 no. We don't take anything for granted. Really? We're you don't hard. wake up like, I made it. Oh, no, 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 no. no. And, actually, and actually, I have doubts. I have a lot of doubts. And uh, Joyce, who is the um, coordinating, programming coordinator of, the fa of those festivals mm -hmm. and uh, I always ask her D do you think we did enough do you think people are happy do you think this or she said no, no absolutely I mean mm -hmm. we're on the right track of course it's not perfect but I, I have doubt and I think doubts are help good things to have right. because if you don't healthy. yeah because if you don't ask yourself questions if you don't wonder things if you don't doubt I mean you 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 stay the same right yeah right and as the worst thing would be to stay stagnant because then there's exactly. no growth so it's been 10 years of you doing the black film festival what motivates you to keep renewing the energy and renewing it every every year I got the inspiration say, <laughs> this is a very tough question i don't <laughs> quite know i cannot put my finger on it but one thing i'm sure of is each time i meet someone that says fabian you said that thing because i do a lot of conferences and coaching and inspire inspiration nights and then seminars as well mm -hmm. um each time somebody says fabian fabian 
you just touched me with that thing you said that inspired right. me to just go and did this and that thing. And after I heard you or after I heard one of your guests, you know, my life changed and everything. And then, wow. And then you can see in the eyes of that person <laughs> that something, there's a light, there's a, you know, it's shining. So that keeps me going okay. because I know I'm in the right track, whether it's during the festivals or during the seminars I do. Um, when, when an artist would come and say, thanks to your festival, I could sell my films or I could meet a director that I can a partner with or right. a producer I mean this is fantastic this is great <laughs> it's like music to your ears oh my god you know <laughs> um, telling me that my lipstick is beautiful that, I mean I, I mean it's nice to hear right. it's nice to hear you're beautiful but it doesn't get it doesn't, you going I mean no not at all <laughs> not at all and but when somebody when I when I can feel I really touched somebody's soul to be the best th that person can be mm -hmm. I mean come on I would mm -hmm. just wake up in the middle of the night and keep working, you know. Right. So, so you do coaching as well. Yes. Okay. Well, it was also a, a, a growing demand because some people were telling me, my God, you came here a little bit more than 10 years ago and already you created a festival that has been 10 years old. That right. means you started right after right you, away. you came here <laughs> from Haiti. How did you do it? Um, how can you be that successful and coming from another country? And then, you know, what was your, your secret to success and everything? So that made me think of, okay, mm -hmm. I like talking. <laughs> I like saying how I did things. So perfect. So I, I started some conferences, uh, some seminars. I go not only my own conferences and seminars, but I'll also go, I'm invited also to universities, colleges, high schools, and then corporate right. um, organization to just go and then talk about how to just go to the next level, to be unstoppable. Right. Yeah, I love that. That's what drives Teaching me. Teaching others to be unstoppable. Yes. <laughs> because we can be unstoppable and we forget sometimes that the world just belongs to us. Right. Yes. You, me, you. I feel like I should have a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah, the world that belongs, belongs to us. us. To all of us. And sometimes we just um, put ourselves in a corner right. and, and act as if, oh, well, she is lucky. Look at what she is doing. Right. She's all beautiful. She is on TV. Mm -hmm. But you can too. Yeah. I mean, if it's not on TV, you can do something else right. and be successful in Find it. Find your, your own calling. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is, you said it. Because everybody <laughs> wants to be somebody else you don't have to be somebody else because you're the best you that you can be so try to find your own calling and succeed in that because right. nobody can do it better than you so yeah this is what you're I you're such teach a motivational speaker <laughs> I feel like I should go and start a brand new project <laughs> oh right now <laughs> I'll coach you <laughs> if you let me yeah it's, it's 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 not working for me it's a pleasure because until that person said, oh my God, I didn't see it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I could do that. I could. And then you, you feel like a whole new window of opportunity just opening up in front of the person right there. And this is like, oh, I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy when I see other people believe they right. can do something and then actually take steps to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, since you're used to coaching and giving advice, what would be your number one advice that you would give to a young woman just trying to figure out what her path should be? I think listen to yourself and think about what you want to do. What, what do you have pleasure doing? What you would really spend time and be recognized as? Mm -hmm. Like, do, you know, is it as a, I don't know, as a coach of, uh, in soccer? Is it as a, I don't know, whatever you, you, want, you want your legacy to be, what mm -hmm. would it be? Sit down with yourself and then identify very clearly your vision for right. your life, for what you would like to do. Not what your <laughs> father told you, not what people are telling you that you're good right. at, what you really feel you right. want to do. And then now, second thing, now see what, are your strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. before you start achieving that? What keeps you for doing that right. now? And then really, it's, it's, it's really important to do this process mm -hmm. and then to identify yourself, your strength, your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Now that will help you identify what kind of help you need, what kind of right. coach you need, what kind of mm -hmm. team you need to put together, what kind I of partner. I find the clearly partner. part yeah. is hard. Defining it is one thing. Defining it clearly is another thing. Because sometimes I think... You know, like you said, what would you like your legacy to be? Mm -hmm. And that's something I always think about. I'm like, when I have kids, what legacy do I want to leave for them? 
But the clearly part is the hard part because sometimes I will wake up and I have a brand new idea. And I'm like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And <laughs> but and then that's okay. That's okay because you, so can, you, can have, you can have 10,000s of ideas, but all of them can be for one purpose. Right. For example, one of my role models that I met that I have a chance to meet in my life that was so inspirational for me, um, it was Oprah when mm-hmm. she came down to Montreal and everything. And um, one thing that Oprah says all the time, um, I mean, Oprah does TV, she does films, she does radio, she does a magazine, magazine she does a network. show. I mean, so many <laughs> things. But at the end of the day, everything she does is to inspire inspire people to right. live their best life like she has one purpose that's her legacy to touch people mm-hmm. and everything so if, but you can achieve that by doing several things right. I took the Oprah example but there's so many other examples right. I could have taken um, like Mother Teresa like anybody else right. um, that are, Mother Teresa it was to do good but she was doing good by preaching by um, helping the poor by talking right. by raising money for, for a charity work by doing so many things but all to the good for the poor, you know? So that's the vision. The vision is like that thing, that that goal, Mm -hmm. but there's so many ways you can achieve. To get to that goal. Yeah. Now, um, unit coaching. (laughs) No, you don't. You're you're doing very good. No, no, I'm just kidding. I I think I might need some coaching. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. You're doing very, very well. You're doing very well. But some people ask sometimes, why do I need any coach? I mean, does that even work? No, I see value because sometimes you need someone to just help you focus. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's definitely a purpose for it. Absolutely. What I see is Tiger Wood is the best golfer in the world, but he still has a coach. I mean, every you know the, the Canadians um, uh, in hockey. I mean, they might be very, very good, but they still have a coach. I mean, right. why would you not go to a mentor or a coach? Right. It doesn't have to be a coach; it can be a mentor. It can be like a partner, a business partner. It can be somebody that really um, wants the best for you mm-hmm. and will listen to you and then will really help you right. achieve it faster. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for this tip. And I'm going to take you off the air and have my coaching session. (laughs) Speedy coaching session. (laughs) So thank you so much. And I think it's great advice, you know, telling people to just really define what you want, Mm -hmm. what you're passionate about. And, you know, take it step by step. And there's many ways to get from point A to point B. Absolutely. And then once you don't, as soon as you have it, decided what it is Mm -hmm. nobody can help you right because i cannot tell you what you should do that should come from within from within definitely well thank you so much for joining us on the couch today that was a pleasure thank (laughs) you for inviting me my pleasure i loved it (laughs) (laughs) and thank you to you guys for joining us on another episode of couch talk stay tuned for the next one take care Wish to see you, wish to see you, may all the colors. <laughs>